Now you're going to learn about how to develop your chest and your triceps. You're going to get the best exercises that will accomplish that. My champions will take you step by step exactly how to use the double joint exercises, develop mass into your chest and into your triceps, and also the single joint exercises that will put shape definition into the chest and into the triceps to fill out your arms and broaden your chest. Put them to work for you with enthusiasm and with belief that you're going to accomplish this. One of the functions of the chest muscle is to pull the arm across the body so that the shoulder extends forward and you have the opposition in the back muscle. Now the pectoral muscle is unique in that it attaches with a single attachment at the shoulder but then has several different attachments along the interior of the rib cage. So what we need to do is, is develop a unique formulation for developing all the different angles of the chest. Since the ideal angles for any body part to be worked from are when the origin and insertion are in line, we're going to have to develop a full spectrum of different angles to be able to work the chest effectively. Because of the number of attachments up and down the middle of the chest, the chest has to be worked from inclined positions, flat positions, and declined positions in order to achieve a full and even development. The pectoralis major is a thick, fan-shaped muscle with an extensive origin from the center of the clavicle, the sternum, and as far down as the sixth or seventh rib, and which inserts into the humerus. It flexes, abducts, and rotates the arm and the shoulder medially. The basic mass and strength building movements for the chest are all some sort of press, where the weight is pushed away from the body by using the pecs, the front delts, and the triceps. The basic mistake we often see in the gym when it comes to training chest is that there's too much pressing of the arms and not enough work from the pecs themselves. To properly develop the chest, the shoulders have to go forward from a backward shrug position to where the pecs are squeezed to the point of full contraction. If the shoulders don't go forward, then the pecs aren't worked directly. The flat barbell bench press has always been one of the most popular of upper body exercises because it not only develops the pectoral muscles, but the triceps and the front deltoids as well. However, because so many different muscles are involved, when you do bench presses, be sure to use wide enough grip to bring the pectorals fully into play. A narrow grip forces the triceps to do a disproportionate amount of the work, as we'll see later. Bring the bar down deliberately and under full control. The negative or eccentric part of the rep is as important as the concentric or positive lifting part of the movement. Lower the bar to the middle of the chest, not too far up toward the neck. Stop, then press it back up to full lockout position, feeling the shoulders pressing forward and the chest muscles contracting. If you lift just with your arms with this exercise, you'll never get the kind of chest development you're looking for. Bringing the bar to a full stop at the bottom is important. When you bounce the weight off your chest, you risk injury and take away from the difficulty of the exercise. So if you want full intensity from the bench press, lower the bar to the chest and come to a full stop before pressing it up again. When you're doing the bench press, be sure to control the bar, the speed at which it comes up and down, and how far down you're going. You don't want that bar to push your body backwards where your chest is being overexpanded and your arms are being pushed to the sides and you're feeling this tearing sensation in the pec deck area. You see a lot of guys bench pressing. They just bounce the weight and jerk it back up. Always keep it smooth. That downward motion is just as important as pushing it up. It's just as important because it stresses strength and 
and uh, muscular definition in the muscle. Dumbbell presses have the advantage of allowing each side of the body to work independently so that both pecs are forced to work at full intensity. Pressing with dumbbells enables the stabilizer muscles around the shoulder to become stronger as well. However, it's more difficult to balance and control dumbbells than it is a barbell, so you need to concentrate on lifting smoothly, deliberately, and under full control at all times. When you press the dumbbells, don't press them directly straight up and down, which involves too much triceps and not enough chest. Instead, lift and lower them in a slight arc, with the dumbbells moving outward on the way down and coming back in toward one another on the way up. Not as much as with a flying exercise, but somewhat of the same movement. This gives you a fuller and more complete contraction of the chest muscles than can generally be achieved when your hands are locked in place holding onto a barbell. Dips are actually a form of decline press and develop the lower part of the pectoral muscles as would a decline barbell or dumbbell press. However, decline presses tend to be more effective as a mass and strength exercise, while dips are more of a full range detail and definition movement. Doing dips, the further forward you lean, the more you're going to involve the pectorals. When you do dips with your body in a more straight up and down position, as demonstrated here, for example, you tend to work more triceps than chest, which is a good arm exercise, but not very beneficial to pectoral development. With dips, the lower you go, the more intense the movement, but never drop down so low that you overstretch the muscles, tendons, and ligaments involved and increase your risk of injury. Doing a barbell bench press on an incline changes the angle of effort of the pectorals and puts greater stress on the upper area of the chest. Incline presses are done exactly like flat bench barbell presses, except for two things. One, when you press on an incline, you generally can't lift as much weight as you can doing a flat bench press, so you'll have to adjust the weight accordingly. And two, you'll find it a little more difficult to balance and control the bar working at this angle, which means you need to concentrate even harder on using proper technique. So be sure to bring the bar down slowly and under full control and come to a complete stop at the bottom before pressing the bar back up to the starting position. Incline dumbbell presses are another mass and strength exercise for the upper pectorals. As with the incline barbell presses, you'll need to do the movement with somewhat less weight than you would on a flat bench. And controlling and balancing the weight requires total concentration. As with flat dumbbell presses, don't press the weight too straight up and down with a lot of triceps effort. Make sure the dumbbells move in a slight arc to help take the arms out of the exercise and make the pectorals do as much of the work as possible. The basic isolation exercise for chest is going to be a fly type of movement. 
Now, a fly type movement is going to bring the arm across the body in an arc. Basically, it's going to be working with one joint. The shoulder joint is going to be rotating. It's important on fly type movements to keep the arms slightly bent and locked in position. And basically, the arm is going to be moving at an arc, allowing for a stretch, and the contraction point is going to be bringing the weight up to the top and squeezing the pectoral muscle. A common mistake that a lot of bodybuilders make when they're doing flying type exercises is trying to go too heavy. Now flies for the most part are generally an isolation exercise and not really a mass building exercise. In fact, I've seen a lot of world champion bodybuilders go into the gym and just use like a 25 or 30 pound dumbbell and really isolate the muscle and learn how to feel the muscle effectively. One of the things that can happen when you do a fly too heavy is that you can strain or tear a pec insertion or a bicep muscle. So you want to be really careful to isolate the muscle and really learn how to feel it. The best way to describe a pectoral fly movement is as a big hug. You hold the weight overhead, palms facing inward, you bend your arms slightly, and then try to keep your elbows at about this same angle throughout the exercise. You don't want a lot of bending and straightening of the arms, which involves triceps effort. Instead, you want to lower the weights in a wide arc, feeling the chest muscles stretch and then bring them up in the same arc, squeezing the pecs together as if you're giving somebody a big bear hug. As with dumbbell presses, you can do dumbbell flies on a flat, an incline, or decline bench, depending on whether you want to focus your training on the middle, upper, or lower area of the pectorals. Remember, flies are an isolation exercise, not one designed primarily for building strength and mass. So keep your weights moderate and develop the intensity you need by very strict technique. Full range of motion, focus and concentration, keeping the mind and the muscle, and training to momentary muscular failure in each set. When you're doing chest flies off the bench, make sure you don't go beyond that 180 degree angle. Don't go down even further, because what you begin to do is tear and stretch the tissue in the muscle joint at the pec deck area. This can contribute to creating stretch marks on your body, as well as damaging that joint ligament system. Many people ask me, is there a difference between the way I train and between a man's training? And I say, yeah, of course. Very few men I know can bench press 315 pounds. <laughs> After rowing exercises, cable crossovers are probably the movement most often done incorrectly in the gym. Bodybuilders frequently make the mistake of bending and straightening their arms during the movement, which takes away from the isolation of the pectorals. They also bring the arms down too much toward their sides, which allows the lats to come into play. Instead, when you do crossovers, you want to feel the chest stretch and contract just as it does with the dumbbell flies. So you need to develop the same hugging movement with your shoulders shrugging all the way back, then coming together in the front to create maximum chest contraction. You work the upper, lower, or middle of the chest with this exercise, depending on how far you bend forward and at what angle you bring your hands together. You can choose the angle that suits you best. 
but be sure not to drop your elbows too far down toward your sides so that your lats become involved in this exercise. So isolate the pecs as much as possible and keep muscles like the lats and triceps out of this exercise. The pec deck allows you to perform a kind of machine flying movement. When you train your chest using a pec deck, you're able to work with very strict isolation as well as through a very long range of motion. So this is a great exercise for achieving the maximum of muscular detail and definition. Therefore, to get the most from this machine, you should use a pec deck primarily for lower stress, lighter weight, and higher rep training. Instead of heavy resistance, concentrate on strict technique. Stretch as far back as you can without discomfort. Then bring your arms together and squeeze the pecs at the top of the movement to achieve a maximum peak contraction. Not using too much weight is very important. Adding too many plates to the stack when you train on a pec deck simply puts too much stress on the shoulder joint and the muscles involved and really doesn't give you any added benefit in return. Chest routine number one. Barbell bench press. Four sets of 10 reps. Incline dumbbell press. Four sets of 10 reps. Flat or incline dumbbell flies. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Cable crossovers. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Chest routine number two. Incline barbell press. Four sets of 10 reps. Flat bench dumbbell press. Four sets of 10 reps. Dips. Four sets of 10 reps. Peck deck fly. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. The function of the tricep is simply to stretch on the arm. The triceps are a free head muscle lying at the back of the upper arm that originate at the shoulder and insert in the forearm below the elbow and work in opposition to the biceps. The triceps brachii is a three head muscle that is situated on the dorsal aspect of the upper arm. It extends the forearm. The long head of the triceps extends and abducts the arm. Pronation plays an important part in triceps exercise routines. 
just as the biceps movement twists the wrist in one direction, that's called supination, the triceps movement twists the arm in the other direction, or pronation. Now this twisting movement should be included in at least one exercise in your triceps routine. Training the long head of the triceps is also an important part of the routine. The long head's fully extended when you're in a position with your elbow raised. You can feel the increase in tension down the back of the arm. Therefore, you need to do at least one exercise in your triceps routine that works the arm in this position. As we learned earlier, how a barbell press affects your muscles depends a lot on how you hold the bar. Hold it with a wide grip and the pectorals do most of the work. Holding the bar with a close grip, on the other hand, forces the arms to work through a much longer range of motion while the length of the chest contraction is shortened. This turns the press into a triceps rather than a pectoral exercise. Along with dips done with the body in an upright position, close grip barbell presses are a primary mass and strength building exercise for developing the triceps. Using a Smith machine has many of the advantages of training with a barbell without some of the disadvantages, which makes close grip presses on a Smith machine an attractive alternative for close grip barbell presses. For example, the fact that you don't have to balance and control the bar to the same degree allows you to keep your hands even closer together than when doing the exercise with a free weight, but you're still lifting against the force of gravity, which gives you the greatest response and adaptation from the muscles. So the result is the ability to achieve the maximum amount of isolation in your triceps training, along with the strongest contraction of the muscles. And these two elements add up to the utmost of intensity in your triceps training. Bench dips are a kind of a paradox, a pressing movement done with the isolation and strictness of an extension exercise. As with parallel bar dips, the lower you go in this movement, the more intensity you generate. As a matter of fact, bench dips tend to be very popular with women, many of whom lack the upper body strength to do parallel bar dips when they first start training. But you do need to exercise proper care with this movement. Never drop down so far that you risk overstretching the muscles, tendons, and ligaments and incurring an injury. Keep the movement smooth, steady, and under full control at all times. For maximum development of the triceps, try alternating bench dips with upright parallel bar dips in your individual arm training routine. What differentiates an extension movement from a press is that only the elbow joint is involved. Extensions don't involve the shoulder. The elbows are kept steady throughout the exercise and the weight moves up and down in an arc with the elbows as a fixed pivot point. Doing lying triceps extensions, also called a French press, most bodybuilders prefer using an easy curl bar although you can use a straight bar and get excellent results as well. Whether you bring the bar down to your forehead or down past the top of your head is also largely a matter of personal preference and individual proportion. Just remember that with any extension movement, you should concentrate on feeling the triceps lengthen and stretch at the bottom of the movement, and you should experience a complete peak contraction with the triceps fully contracted at the top. Strict technique and full range of motion are the keys to success with triceps extensions. Work those triceps. Work for balance and symmetry throughout your body. Well, beginners should always learn 
first and foremost how to do the exercise correctly. I believe in basic exercises and I believe in a strict full movement. And I think the most important part of the training is to, to do the, the exercise very strict and over the full movement. Standing triceps extensions are a variation of lying triceps extensions and they are done basically the same way. One significant difference, however, is that doing extensions in this standing position, your elbows are positioned further back, which creates an even greater tension in the long head of the three-headed triceps muscle, forcing it to contract that much more intensely during the movement. An advantage of using dumbbells in many exercises is the ability to work each side of the body independently and with greater isolation. And this is particularly true of dumbbell triceps extensions. However, another advantage of doing extensions with dumbbells is lengthening range of motion. Notice that the weight is not lowered directly to the rear. Instead, it comes in behind the back of the head and down to the top of the spine until the triceps are fully stretched and extended. To achieve this range of motion safely, be sure to use a light enough weight for this movement so that you can really stretch the triceps as far as possible, because that's the key to getting the maximum benefit from this particular exercise. To make kickbacks an effective extension movement, remember what extension exercises are all about. Be sure to keep the elbow as steady as possible so that the weight moves forward and back in an arc with the elbow as a fixed pivot point. Extend the weight. Don't lift it up and back with the shoulder. Triceps press downs are probably the most popular cable triceps exercise. Again, the key here is whether or not the elbows are used as fixed pivot points, or whether you let your shoulders become involved, whether you tend to bend forward from the waist during the movement to help push the weight. Both of these techniques turn the exercise into more of a press rather than an extension which it's not supposed to be, in spite of its name. With dumbbell extensions, maximum intensity involves stretching the triceps as much as possible. With the cable press downs, the extension position is important, but what you should really concentrate on is a full and total contraction at the bottom of the movement. Lock your arms out, crunch the triceps muscles, and work to feel as strong a peak contraction as possible with every single rep. For maximum intensity doing cable triceps, the weight isn't as important as the burn. When you're working at the level of maximum effort, after a couple of sets, your triceps will feel like they're on fire because of heavy lactic acid buildup in the muscles. You'll find a variety of machines in most gyms you can use for triceps training. What they offer is strictness, isolation, and full range of motion. For maximum benefit, stay with lighter weights and higher repetition sets. Train for quality using triceps machines rather than mass, strength, or power. Triceps routine number one. 
close grip barbell press. Four sets of 10 reps. One arm triceps extension. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Table press down. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Triceps routine number two. Bench dips. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Barbell triceps extensions. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Machine extensions. Four sets of 10 to 12 reps. Now that you know the best exercise is to developing your chest and your triceps, put it to work for you. Give it all your God, and you'll be amazed within 30 days what you will accomplish. In the next tape, there's 30 of the best exercises my champions will show you how to develop broader and thicker shoulders, as well as how to strengthen and develop every single muscle in your legs. You've got to want it from within, because we, sitting here, cannot go inside of your living room and say, you know, Jane, you got to get your butt off that couch and do something about it. You've got to want it from within. Uh, bodybuilding in general is a great overall form of physical education. Uh, I myself, as a professional, it took me a long time to achieve what I wanted to achieve. I mean, not everybody who starts bodybuilding is going to be a professional. It's a very difficult sport. It takes a lot of time. But you can, through bodybuilding, change your body to what you specifically want it to be. If you want to be a pro, then you have to train like a pro. But if you want to look better, bodybuilding will do it. Don't listen to other people. Just follow your heart. Just go for it. Do what you want to do. You can achieve anything you want. You know, you just have to go for it. You can start off just wanting to get in shape. But eventually, I'm telling you, it's a very addictive sport. And you will become more and more involved. And as you do that, the more progress you'll see and the more appreciation you'll have for top-notch bodybuilders. Just remember that only the strong survive. So you have to stay strong, you have to train hard, go in the gym, train like there's no tomorrow, let absolutely nothing stop you from reaching your goal, and make every single rep count. One of the main things that made me get a lot of intensity in the workout was that when I got to the gym, I wasn't a big person like a lot of people, and I wanted to be the strongest, no matter what. So my goal was when I grab a weight, I immediately used all my concentration I could and do everything intense. And I developed that slowly that my intensity came automatic as years go, went by. And I think that helped me to become stronger and really become a champion. Bodybuilding can have a positive effect on anybody's life. Uh, it can help you lose weight and give you more confidence. Um, can change your, your physical appearance, which is, is good, you know, for you mentally. Uh, you know, it can be good for anybody. When I first started powerlifting, I always wanted to bodybuild, but I didn't feel that I had the genetics for it. And as I started to um, train harder and harder and push myself farther, I started to see results. I said, hey, this can work. I think the, the definition that I would come up with for what quality workout techniques are is going in and spending the minimum amount of time in the gym possible and achieving the maximum amount of results possible. Be with people who are confident. Be with people who are positive. Don't be with skeptics. Don't be with doubters. Be with people who say to you, this can work, this does work, this has worked, and will work for you.
I just envision myself going to the gym as an animal. And I love the pain. I love the burning of the muscles. I love taking my top off in the mirror, seeing my veins all you know, pumping out of my skin, seeing my muscles pumping out of my skin, just feeling that overall rush. It's like a rush to me. And the more it hurts me, the better I feel. If I don't come out of the gym feeling that burn or that pain, I know I haven't accomplished what I wanted to accomplish that day.